Hey guys, Future Spartan here. I just want to let you guys know I completely screwed the pooch on this, but it's too good of a video to uh, get rid of. So for this video and only this video, you guys are going to have zero game sound, and I apologize for that. But I promise you the video itself is fantastic. My commentary throughout should be good. So hopefully you guys enjoy, and I will make sure that this does not happen again. Thanks. Hello everybody and welcome to War on the Sea. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are going to be starting our very first episode of the campaign. So, just as a precursor to let everybody know just how useless I am at strategy games, I am an absolute potato. You're not here to watch me uh, do absolutely amazing things in this. I'm going to be on a struggle bus. So uh, hopefully you guys are ready. It's going to be entertaining. All right, that's the main thing. I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. You guys will probably be laughing at me like a madman. So uh, just throwing that out there. But we're going to try to take on the Japanese right here with Operation Watchtower. Let's go ahead and start. Now, I have tried four different times to record this, so I'm hoping this one actually works. Since 1937, Japan and China have been engaged in a protracted conflict of the Second Sino-Japanese War. America, along with other Western nations, including Britain and Australia, embargo the sale of oil, steel, and iron ore to Japan in an attempt to stem further expansionism. Japan plans occupation of the, dusty, the Dutch East Indies, I don't know why I struggle to say that, and Malaya as alternate sources of natural resources. And, on December 7, 1941, launches a multi-pronged offensive throughout the Pacific. The goal is to quickly secure Japanese interests, set up a defensive perimeter, and then negotiate peace with America from this position of strength. As a part, or as part of the numerous offensives lost, as part of the numerous offensive launched, aircraft from six Japanese fleet carriers attack Pearl Harbor and cripple the United States Pacific Fleet. The sur Prize attack finally draws America into the war. In order to expand the southern perimeter of the empire, Japan undertakes Operation Mo, the invasion of Port Moresby in New Guinea, as well as Tulagi in the Solomon Islands. The ensuing naval battle, the first carried out by carrier aircraft only, ultimately turns the Port Moresby invasion, turns back the Port Moresby invasion. A light carrier, a destroyer, and several smaller vessels are lost by the Japanese. Allied, for, allied forces, so I can't speak, I apologize. Allied forces suffer significant losses with the sinking of the fleet carrier Lexington, a destroyer, and an oiler. Yorktown, the other U.S. fleet carrier participating, is damaged and hastily returns to Hawaii for repairs. Japan turns its attention to the U.S. base at Midway in, an, in a plan to lure the Americans into a decisive naval battle. The massive strike force contains four fleet carriers along with numerous battleships and cruisers, enough to overpower any opposition. Yet Allied codebreakers have discerned the plan, sending three fleet carriers to lie in wait for the approaching enemy. In a stunning victory for the Allies, all four Japanese fleet carriers, Akagi, Kaga, Soryu and Hiryu are sunk along with the heavy cruiser Mikuma for the loss of the fleet carrier Yorktown and destroyer Haman. The Battle of Midway last month has significantly weakened Japan's carrier strength in the Pacific and allowed the Allies to go on the offensive. One initial goal is to secure the southern Solomon Islands in a plan codenamed Operation Watchtower. Priority for the operation intensifies as Japanese troops begin construction of an airfield on the island of Guadalcanal. Such an airfield would allow long-range bombers to attack the supply lines between America and Australia, as well as provide air cover for Japanese naval forces pushing further south. Japanese supply ships carrying construction materials for the airfield continue to arrive at the while the Allies make preparations to seize Guadalcanal. All right, so this is where we start, guys. Right after the Battle Midway, we're going to be doing the island hopping campaign, and we're going to absolutely push Japan back. All right, so we know our objective. 
we must build a rank five airfield on Guadalcanal. We must take control of Guadalcanal and the Florida Islands, and we must maintain control of Port Moresby, Milne Bay, Rental Islands, Santa Cruz Islands, and Malyata. All right, so that's our goal. And with that being said, let's go ahead and start. Now, we are going to be starting down here at New Hebrides. I don't know if it's Hebr or Hebrides or if it's New Hebrides. So I apologize to anybody who knows where this is. I, I'm just not very good with names. Clearly, I can't speak anyway, so you guys shouldn't be too, too uh, you know, caught off guard. All right, so my very first fleet, I, I, I get 250 command points. I don't think we're going to start with an aircraft carrier. I think we're going to go with a good old-fashioned battleship fleet. Okay, first things first. We're going to bring in the South Dakota-class battleship, uh, Alabama. And then we are going to support him with our, or support her, with Fletcher-class destroyers, two of them. We'll have Fletcher and Radford. And we are going to have two Atlanta-class light cruisers. We'll get Atlanta and Juno. All right, this main battle group is going to be Power Group 1. There we go. And we are going to be in a circular formation. Uh, Alabama is going to need to be the number two. If you look here, the number two is in the center. So we want Alabama to be in number two. So we want Alabama and Fletcher to swap places. And then we want Atlanta to swap places with the Fletcher. And that will allow Atlanta and Juno to bring up the front, the rear. And then we will have Radford and Fletcher out either side. And I feel like that's a pretty good formation for what we're going to be using. And we are going to sail this uh, division straight up and patrol just outside of the Santa Cruz Islands. Uh, mainly because we want to uh, guarantee safe passage for our transports in a moment. So let's go ahead and click done. Let's add a course. We are going to go up here to the Santa Cruz Islands. And we're going to make the ugliest looking patrol you've ever seen in your life. But it should be effective basically i am going to send my transports in the shallow water all the way up as far as we can and we are going to try to come around into the santa cruz islands to begin with okay this trench right here is deep water we don't want to go into deep water with our transports the naval ships not so much a problem but the transports will get absolutely hunted down by enemy submarines by the way this game has it all from submarines all the way up to transports and aircraft carriers like everything about this game is ridiculous and it is an absolute beast mode uh, strategy game and it's real time so uh yeah right now we've got it paused but we're gonna be uh we're gonna be struggling you guys are gonna have to laugh at me okay uh but that's the very first strike force that we've got uh we're gonna grab another new c uh and this one is going to have a where yet Fletcher Fletcher class and we will use uh, Jenkins and Lavalette in this okay and then we are going to go down here to our transports and grab uh, type B1 no that's a submarine dummy I need a um do, 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 too far. Where is where I'm looking? Type C3. There we go. Type C3. We're going to grab three of these. And a Cimarron. Do, do, do. There we go. Now, we want the Lavalette to come in the rear. So, we're going to swap places with hit this and then swap lavalette and the cimarron again 
All right. And they are going to have a line ahead column. Which should just be a straight line. And we'll click done. Now if we click here and go to cargo, we're going to load troops. We're going to load supplies. We're going to load engineering. And we're going to load fuel. And this should allow us to get everything we need to build the initial base here at the Santa Cruz Islands in one trip. Now, that being said, it's kind of dangerous because at the same time, you're putting a lot of eggs into one basket, if you know what I mean. Uh, long columns are easier to spot, and so, you know, you gotta got to protect them. So, we are going to lay in a course, like I said, all the way, shallow waters, and then when we get out to here, we can turn back into port. All right. So now that is laid in. They know their mission. And we have 50 points left to go ahead and add some extra uh, forces to bolster our defense. Or in this case, the offense. Uh, we are going to be using... Um, I think I'm going to go with some subs. Oops. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. Go back down here. Uh, new C. And we are going to go... Uh, actually, I forgot to name that fleet. Oh, I hate this map. I will say that. Um, let's go ahead and play just a little bit. Try to get those fleets separate. Task Force 2 is going to be changed to Transport 1. Okay. And now from New Hebrides, we're going to go with a new C. And we are going to add some Gato class submarines. I'm probably going to go with two submarines per sneaky group. Okay, that's what I'm going for. Because I just feel like it's better to have a buddy system. You know what I mean? We know there are other subs in the area, so being able to have somebody else that's friendly near you can help counter the other subs, hopefully, if we run into a submarine versus submarine conflict. So uh, that's the goal. We're going to have Gato and Greenling in a uh, task force. They are going to be called Sneaky Boys 1. And we are going to send them right away to start harassing the Japanese up here around Guadalcanal. We're going to send them straight into the action right away. Because we need to disrupt the supply line of them trying to support Guadalcanal's construction. All right, so we'll go ahead and call that. And then at the same time, we're going to make a second uh, submarine fleet. So let's go ahead and go back here. New C. We are going to have the Grouper and Growler. That's a great name. For Sneaky Boys 2. Alright. And these guys are done. Let's go ahead and lay in a course. These guys are going to be kind of coming straight into this end of the uh, Guadalcanal. And just trying to disrupt any enemy fleets that may be trying to pass through and come south and, and harass us. So, we're just going to be patrolling that area right there. Alright, that leaves us with 30 points left. Uh, at this point, I think it would be a good idea 
to go ahead and call some air forces in. We are going to have an extra air force wing of depth charge Avengers. They are going to come straight up this pipeline and try to run into some submarines that may be on the surface. Now these guys, once they get low on fuel, will turn, turn around and RTB immediately. So you don't have to worry about losing them because they're running out of fuel, which is nice. Okay, so that is covered. That leaves us with 29 points. Uh, I think I'm going to hold on to those for later. And we can go ahead and get this party started. So, without further ado, here we go. What's the worst that could happen, guys? Right? So we're going to speed up time here. We're doing 1,800 times the speed. Uh, we have an Avenger that has been intercepted by a... Now, we're going to go ahead and ignore that. Actually, it's an encounter that we can't ignore. Okay. Begin. All right. So let's see what we got. I'm not 100% sure, but I think we should be able to find it and actually use the machine. Yeah, we have machine guns on these. So we can definitely intercept that plane. So that's the goal. We haven't seen the plane yet. Even though we know he's here. This was an engagement we couldn't actually, like, avoid, so... I'm kind of looking for him. I don't see him. Maybe we take this group and send them this way. Just kind of spread these guys out a little bit. Because right now we're just kind of flying in circles. We can leave any time, so I guess we'll go ahead and leave. Not sure why we were forced to come in, but uh, okay. That's a thing that did happen. So we can go ahead and... Wait for them to get out there. Then start a new air group. Same thing. Avengers... Depth charges, done, and I want you guys to lay in a course once again, straight up this, straight up this channel. Because we need to give our guys cover. Same thing. Okay, it's now nighttime. We can't actually do it. Our subs have encountered a plane. So we're going to go ahead and ignore that. And keep the simulation rolling. Now that spotting plane is most likely a sub-launch spotting plane. And like I said, our transport over here in, in shallow water, hopefully because it's nighttime, can be okay. It's starting to turn out into the deeper water. We once again ran into uh, a plane over here, so we're going to ignore that. Okay. 
And you can see our, our patrol is doing pretty good at, at making sure that our transport gets where we need it. We're going to ignore that engagement again with the plane. And we have arrived at port. So now we can go here. And we can unload all. Let's go cargo. Unload all. All right. Now if we let that go for a minute, this should turn blue. says that we're not, are we not at port? Okay, so transport one has unloaded all, okay, we're good there. So now let's get transport one. Heading back to New Hebrides. So, course straight back. We don't need to zigzag too much. So, let that be a thing. And then we will, once they get back, if they get back safely, then we'll send them over here to Rental Island to try to grab Rental Island really quickly. Um, all right. So, go ahead and play forward. And while that's going on, let's click on the Santa Cruz Islands and upgrade to a level one airfield. We can't launch at night. So we have a level one airfield on Santa Cruz Islands now, which is a big deal because that'll allow us to patrol aircraft in this area and uh, hopefully get some right. Right now it's a level one, so we can only launch fighter uh, fighter planes, but we should be able to uh, take advantage of air superiority in the area, hopefully. And let's hope our transport fleet makes it back home all right. Hopefully they avoid that island. Or just go straight through it, I guess. That's that's an option. Enemy aircraft once again. Uh, we're going to go ahead and ignore it. Ignore again. Okay, we have officially run into a enemy fleet. What do we got? We have two destroyers, two light cruisers, and two heavy cruisers in this uh, fleet. So let's go ahead and begin. First orders of business. We need to go to periscope depth, which I believe we already are. We need to upscope. And we need to get this party started. So you can see there we are right under the surface. We can see directly ahead of us is an enemy fleet. So uh, let's go ahead and check through our periscope. Definitely heavy cruisers out front. Okay, so we got two heavy cruisers. We've got a light cruiser there in what looks like a Tenryu, which is hilarious. I don't know exactly what this, this front cruiser is, but uh, we're about to go ahead and target this one. And then with grouper, or Growler, we're going to do the same thing. This is pretty cool. Whoops. We are going to target this guy. 
Okay? And we are going to look at target. All right, that should start our uh, solution on the target. So let's go back to the grouper. You can see that we uh, lost contact with them, even though we, we can clearly see them right now. But if we go here, we'll reestablish contact. We've got a 50% solution on this guy right now. If we go to our torpedoes, we can get ready to launch all six of them. We're going to do a relatively low angle. We have Mogami class heavy cruiser already classified. We now have a 92% firing solution. We're going to go ahead and we're at 3,400 yards. We don't want to fire just yet. Let's go ahead and Actually, I think we will go ahead and fire torpedoes. Fire. And then I'm going to have you go ahead and drop to drop scope. Drop to 130 feet. And get out of here. Okay, and then if we go to Growler, you can see here, we are going to hold our fire for now. We are still targeting the second ship, so we will go ahead and launch six with a six degree and fire. Okay, and now we will go ahead and drop scope, dive, and form up. Waypoints, we are going to get you guys out of there. I said waypoints, we are going to get you guys out of there. All right. Now, we see torps coming in, and they look absolutely beautiful, baby. Look at that spread. Come on. Come on. We want to see it. First torp strike of the game. Come on. They look beautiful. One. Two. Three. We had two duds. That's another thing that could happen. So two of our five torpedoes that hit him were duds. But we, no, it was three, three of the, the torpedoes were duds. So about half, literally half of the torpedoes that we hit that guy with were duds. But you got to believe that three torpedo hits on this ship should be enough to take it down. It's a heavy cruiser, but three torpedo hits all along one side, spread out, not even like real super close to one another. That's a lot of flooding to have to control. All right, so let's go ahead and rig for silent. Same thing for grouper.
So you can see she's listing heavily. She's got to go down. Like three torpedoes should be enough to sink it. Now, that being said, where are our other torpedoes? Oh, there they are. And, of course, everybody turned to uh, pursue us. So, yeah, we're, we're not going to be able to do a whole lot there. I think we launched far enough out that we're not going to have to worry too much. But I would have thought that this thing would have sunk by now. Like, that's a huge amount of damage. Three big torpedo hits. Go ahead and turn the, uh, speed down a bit. Same thing. Okay, grouper's already going pretty slow. And we will go ahead and get ready for a disengage. We can leave it right now. They have no idea where we're at, which is nice. But I, I don't want to leave without seeing what happens with this ship. So I think we'll go do some time compression. Okay, we can't do time compression. But this is kind of what we were hoping for here. I don't know if she's going to sink. It honestly looks like she might live. So uh, let's go ahead and leave this battle. We had heavy damage to Megami, but uh, not enough. Not quite enough. All right. Well, in that case. And the good thing is that damage will stick. Like, that's, that's damage that is real that it will persist until she gets repairs. So if we find them again, we can do more damage. And so, yeah, I think we're off to a pretty good start. We didn't sink it, but three big torpedo hits is massive. Especially this early, on a heavy cruiser. Okay, we have encountered the, I would imagine it's literally the exact same group. So let's go ahead and uh, head in. We should be loaded and all the good things. So, same thing, we're going to go in here. We are at seven knots currently. And we are at periscope depth, so let's raise scope. And see if we can't acquire a target. Shall we? You can see the periscope sticking out of the water there. Let's go ahead and look directly at them. All right, target. Boom. She is doing 16 knots. It's hard to believe that that thing can do 16 knots while listing that badly. Uh, we're 3,300 yards in closing. Okay, she's down to 10 knots. So she's, she's slowing down. Okay, let's go ahead and classify. That was Mogami, if I remember correctly. The one we hit. So let's go ahead and do that. Where are you at, Mogami? There you are. Classify. That in instantly helps our targeting solution. We are going to go to Torpedoes. Launch another full salvo. Uh, let's go with 3 degrees once again. And fire when ready. Okay. Now, go ahead and... Drop scope and dive. We're going to have you get out of the way. If you're on this side, I need you to go this way. And then we will switch over to the growler. Have you start f focusing this guy, which we know was the ton. Uh, I said start focusing this guy. 
Oh, because we're not we're not actually using our scope. Forgot about that. Scope. B. We can't technically see them. So uh, we're going to go ahead and target. Hello, waves, you mind? This guy. Let's go ahead and tr look at target. We are going to classify that as the, ton the tone again. Because that's what we know it is. We already saw that in the last one. So go ahead and classify them as the tone. Pretty uh, signature quad mounts there on the front. Pretty easy to tell the difference. So uh, let's go to our targeting solution. Let's give us... Fire, go back to orders, drop scope, and use waypoints. We need you to dive, and we need you to turn out as well. Now, the good news is these are Mark 14 torpedoes. They do have, they're not necessarily tracking, but they have gyroscopes on board, so they will turn towards the uh, solution that we programmed into them. So you can see a pretty hefty turn there to get them to head towards the target that we had selected. And we are dropping below 230 feet, or we're dropping down to 230 feet. We're probably cavitating right now at 80 feet, but we just need to get these ships turned around and get out of here. Because as soon as things start to go down, these guys are going to get real angry. And uh, those torpedoes, once again, look absolutely spot on. Now, we're going to miss probably with the rear, but we are definitely going to get some hits. And this is probably going to be the end of the Mogami. Especially considering we're going to hit towards the end, and that's going to knock out our propulsion even more. There it is. That should be propulsion. We get a second hit is a dud. We get a third hit that's a dud. And we get a fourth hit, which is an actual shot, and that's fire, and she is going down. She is not going to survive that. She is dead in the water immediately. I think that's too much for Mogami. All right, so let's look at the uh, tone class here. We should have torpedoes en route. Uh, we did manage to sink Mogami. These guys are starting to uh, break out of formation to come after us. You can see back here in the back. But uh, I don't think it's going to do them any good. Where's our other torpedoes? Somebody else just got struck by a torpedo. But it was a dud. Did we almost hit these guys after we hit him? That would be fantastic. That would have been great. Uh... That being said, I was expecting some more torpedoes to be heading this direction. Looks like the the destroyers that are back here that are like think maybe they're just going to conduct some rescues or uh, like rescues here. I don't see our other uh, torpedoes. Oh, there they are. I see them now. They're running, they're running almost parallel, but they are coming in. So this, this could get interesting. We can't time compress. But you can see them. You can just make them out right here. I think these rough waves are actually helping us because these torpedoes just, they're not seeing them in time. And Mogami back there sinking. Let's take a look at her as she slips below the surface. She's sinking pretty hard. Yep, yeah, she's rolling over. She's rolling over. Giving up her ghost. No survivors. Unfortunate. Alright. I mean, fortunate for us, but unfortunate for her. Where were we? We need to look at the ton. Or tone. We still got those torps coming. It looks like they might be a little bit behind, but I don't know. They, they are going to catch her. She's doing... I don't know what she's doing. I don't know how fast she's going. But those destroyers that are hanging back back there aren't really doing a whole lot to help their their uh, heavy cruisers out. 
and I don't think we're going to hit her. I mean, it's going to be real close. Those look fantastic, considering we hooked them in there. Like, these look absolutely fantastic. But uh, I, I don't think they're going to catch her in time. I think she's going to outrun them. That being said, the guys that are following behind, say, Tenryu and this destroyer, may catch him by accident. But I do think she's going to get away with it. Tone is going to survive. This, these guys... Probably, uh, well, the Destroyer's fine. Tenryu may be an unintended consequence, but we'll take it. We'll take some collateral damage here. If they've got enough range, which it does appear that they are scooting right towards Tenryu. Let's, let's get on board Tenryu. Now, Tenryu, you guys know from World of Warships Legends, it's a light cruiser from uh, low tiers. It is very old. So, uh, yeah. She looks to be on a collision course with death. And that is not going to end well for her. Come on, Tenryu. Speed up. Speed up, baby. We need you to catch those. Wait for it. Come on. Get there. I think she might just avoid it. Yeah, she definitely just barely avoided it. Is she going to catch the second one? Nope, she, she's just gotten lucky. They are scooting right across the bow. That would be terrifying. You're seeing the streaks. You can't really do anything about it, but you are getting so lucky right now. Yep, and each one of them's crossing. All right, so that's that one. We managed to sink Mogami. We're going to go ahead and retreat. 13,000 tons of Mogami sunk. You got to love it. And uh, no damage to either of our subs. Now, we have launched uh, 12 torpedoes each. So, we got to consider that. We might need to check and see how much ammo we've got in the next one. Alright, so we should be able to go ahead and... Uh, we're not quite back to base yet. So, speed up time again. Enemy ship spotted again. We are going to go ahead and begin once more. Into the fray we go. Let's go ahead and do the same exact thing. Let's pull up our scope. And start the battle. Let's go ahead and bring up our scope. Oh, there we go. I see. And of course, we do have Tenryu right there. But we are going to once again target the Tone. Wait. Is that the Tone? Yeah, it's the Tone. It has to be. It just looks different from this angle. All right, so we'll classify it as tone, and we want you to also attack tone. I did tell you who to attack, dang it. Up scope, bino, target. It's not like we have to hurry. Target, tone. Okay. Now let's go back to uh, grouper. We are going to look at target. This is a terrible angle to attack from. We need to go ahead and set a waypoint 
over this direction. All right. We need to get the front of the ship around. That's where we have all of our torpedoes. Well, we have we have four launchers in the rear, but I want all six from both of these submarines to go straight for the tone. Okay. Let's go ahead and go back to regular time compression. And we want to fire all six with a three degree spread, fire at will, growler, same thing, fire all six with a three degree spread and fire at will. We are sinking the tone right here, right now. All right, so let's get these guys together Let's go ahead and drop scope, dive, and get the heck out of here. Same thing with the grouper. We need you to drop scope, dive, and GTFO. Break and GTFO. All right. Now, let's see how we're doing. I don't see them yet, but we know they're on the way. Where are they at? Where are my demon fish? Oh, there we go. Off in the distance. Oh, actually, a lot closer than that. We've got these. Okay, we only fired four torpedoes at it. So let's hope we get 100% uh, efficiency out of these and no duds. It'd be heartbreaking. Let's look at the uh, torpedoes here. We have zero torpedoes left in the nose. We have 10 torpedoes out the rear. So we may need to re-engage with the rear torpedoes. Um, but we'll see how that goes in a moment. We do appear to be getting some hits here. Those freaking torps look fantastic. Come on, baby. Look at that shot. That's going to be rear and front. That is disgusting. Are we going to hit the rear? It's close. Yep, we got a hit and it detonated. And two detonations. Midship and rear. And hopefully that doesn't slow him down too much and he can go straight out in front of the next set of torpedoes. But I think that may have just stopped him. That may have stopped him cold. He's got a nasty fire on board. May have been an ammo detonation back there. Hard to tell. But definitely, yeah, he's definitely stopped dead in his tracks. And that may have just saved him from sinking right away. But generally, when a ship stops like that, it's death. Like, he is done. go back to our uh, ships here we're at 230 feet we'll go silent growler go silent what's our speed nine knots let's drop that down to four so that we're as quiet as possible without being stopped 
because we have enemy destroyers heading straight for us. Two Tenryus sailing alongside. Actually, one is a Tenryu. One of them is something else. Or am I just weird? I think, I, I think they're both Tenryus. They just look at... No, one's different. One's got a tripod and the other one's just got a uh, flag. Okay. Let's go back to Grouper. This may be dumb. Considering these guys are coming straight at us. But uh, I wonder if we come up to uh, Periscope Depth. This may be really, really dumb. In fact, I know it is really, really dumb. Because these guys are literally heading right for me. Now let's just go ahead and uh, leave. Confirm. Okay. I was going to use maybe the rear torpedo launchers on them. But uh, we've got heavy flooding and heavy damage to the tone. They're not long for this world. Because I'm assuming we're going to re-encounter them very, very soon. Alright, now let's go ahead and lay in a course. Okay, sneaky boys too. Let's get you a new patrol set up. All right, and let's go. Uh, that's an aircraft we can ignore. Uh, let's go with a new course. Straight up here. And speed up time. Actually, pause. Course. I want to intercept this guy again with a fresh submarine okay that's the goal okay well I guess we're not going to intercept him again. Thought we might. Okay, let me grab you. And course, same thing. All right, and now we need to go back to our transport and load. Do, do, do. Cargo. We are going to load 
troops. Oh no, not on the Jenkins. On the C3, we are going to load troops. Then we are going to load supplies. We are going to load engineering. And we are going to load fuel. And we are going to send this fleet course straight to the Sentinel Islands. And then we are going to send our surface fleet over here to guarantee passage. All right, let's go ahead and speed up time again. We can ignore the plane. Speed up time. We have enemy ships spotted near Sneaky Boys 2. Okay. What is it? Saw it for a second. But apparently it's not going to tell us. Let's go ahead and begin. Now remember, we only have aft torpedo tubes. So uh, it's going to be an interesting engagement. Let's go ahead and scope. Start. Okay, bearing 300. Let's go ahead and look at these fellas. We've got us a convoy, baby. Some big boys, too. Some real big boys. So let's go ahead and target us this ship right here. And remember, we only have the aft tubes. So we can deselect that, use the aft tubes. We're going to be getting... I don't think we have six. I think we only have four. So we'll use all four torpedoes. Uh, we're going to be using a... I don't know. Three degrees spread seems to be pretty pretty solid. So I think that's what we'll go with. Let's go ahead and look at target so that we're locked onto it. Uh, we need to identify said target. So uh, let's go ahead and click out. That is a big boy right there. That looks like a Mogami or a Miyoko. All right, let's uh, classify. I'm going to go with uh, Miyoko. And we'll see from there. Where are you, Miyoko? All right, so we have the uh, crane facing this way. We have slanted stack, single stack, three guns in the front, two guns at the rear. This is a Miyoko. Okay. So let's go back to grouper. Um, there we go. Look at target. Okay, we are going to want to face away from them. So turn out, and then switch to Growler, and we will also have you turn out. And we want you to also raise scope. We have reacquired targets. We are going to focus both attacks on the same ship. So we have Miyoko selected. We are building a firing solution. So 
Let's do a little bit of time compression while we uh, run our ships out. We actually have a really good firing solution right now with this ship. So we'll go ahead and fire torpedoes. Hello? Can we, uh, can we fire the torpedoes? We have a 96% solution. Fire the freaking torpedoes, man! Oh, we, did, we didn't turn them on. Okay, well, that, that makes a little more sense. Fire the torpedoes! Am I losing my mind... Turn that off. Fire the freaking torpedoes! Look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be real honest. I need you guys to start firing torpedoes in the very near future. Please don't argue with me. Fire the torpedoes. Thank you. For God's sakes, that's a pain in the butt. Okay. Now, uh, go ahead and drop scope and dive. We're going to have your waypoint just go. And then for Growler... Oh, wait, that was Growler. We want uh, Grouper now. We're going to go Binos. And we will hold our fire... But still maintain that we're moving away here. Um, let's just go ahead and break. So that we're not continuing to move away. Let's just stop. Oops. Don't want to go in reverse. Just stop. Actually, uh, waypoint this way. And then we will exit binos and check out this heavy cruiser that's about to get hopefully absolutely shredded by demon fish in the very, very near future. Oh, right there. You can see him right on the corner of the screen. We can't do time compression with the torps in the water. And right now, they appear to be running straight and true. And we appear to be on a collision course with them, which is absolutely fantastic. And even if we miss this guy, we may hit one of the others. There is a whole mess of uh, angry folks down this line, though. This is a really, really nasty convoy. It's a shame we intercept them with the one ships that we have actually used all of our torpedoes on. <laughs> Unfortunately, but, you know, you gotta make do with what you got. Start moving in as we get a little bit closer. Those torps look absolutely beautiful again. Let's just hope we get more explosions than we get duds. Those duds are actually a pain in the neck. But, I mean, it is realistic. There were actual torpedoes that were duds. Uh, we may actually not have gotten as good a, a shot here as I, th I was originally thinking. But then again, they are closing relatively quickly. So maybe we will. 
really wanting to catch it. I mean, it looks good. It lo Never mind. I, I take back what I just said a minute ago. Those look absolutely fantastic. These torpedoes are lethal. And with the, the ocean riled up the way it is, these guys don't even see it. They're not even turning to avoid them or anything. It's great. Uh, does look like we're only going to get two hits, though. Maybe three, but I don't know if this one's going to actually hit. So let's hope for all explosions here. One explosion. Two explosions. Come on, baby! Three explosions! Three hits, baby! Yeah! We got one in the fore, one in the mid, and one in the aft. That has got to be a sink. Has to be. Miyoko's going to the bottom, baby. Wait, did we hit with the rear? Nope. Nope, it's it snuck through. That was a beautiful engagement. Absolutely beautiful. Alright, now let's switch back over to grouper. Um, binos. Let's see where we're at. We've got some angry ships on the horizon. Very angry ships. Uh, let's go ahead and break. And just go ahead and waypoint away. We've got a 44% uh, firing solution on them. We're up to 66%. Let's go ahead and go to the targeting screen here. We're up to 70%. We're going to use all four of the aft tubes. Let's go ahead and turn that one off. This one on and prepare to fire the tubes once we get a good solution. We are going to sink this ship. And then we're going to return to port and fuel or er, to uh, rearm. Go ahead and fire. She's dead in the water. We're going to go ahead and fire the rear tubes. We're going to drop scope. And we are going to GTFO. And then we're going to get ready to uh, retreat when we can. Though I am going to sit. Look at these torpedoes. Now, these are Mark 14 torpedoes, and I love the fact that they turn, man. That's fantastic looking. They are homing. They're not homing. They're not actual homing torpedoes. But what they do do is they have the gyro... Doo-doo. I know, right? I'm a child. I can't help it. Okay, they have no idea where we are. And these torpedoes on en route to uh, intercept this ship that has already taken an absolute beating and is dead in the water. There's nothing it can do. Can't really see the torpedoes as of yet. But they're coming from a long ways out. We have good range on these. So we don't have to get super close. The, uh, the spread can be very, very good. And since I get to choose the spread, I use a lower spread. Which means I can launch them from further out and still get multiple hits on target if the solution is good. Now this solution wasn't great. But I mean the guy is literally not moving. I uh, should have probably done a manual... Uh, a manual fire on those torpedoes, but it is what it is. I think we're going to be okay. I'm looking for uh, torpedoes to come in front of these destroyers any moment. It's funny because we might actually hit them even though we're aiming for this guy. I don't remember exactly what angle we are to this guy. So depending on which direction they're coming... These guys might actually get wrecked. Uh, I don't want to go that fast. Let's drop it down to five knots. How fast are we going with grouper? Nine. Let's drop that down to five knots as well. All right. Look at the damage control, though. Like They've already got the fires extinguished. Uh, they're working on uh, probably getting propulsion back online because they know there's probably another attack coming. I 
I'm just looking for them and I can't see them. Oh, there we go. We've got them in the water. They are heading in and look to be on target. Not perfect, maybe a little bit behind, but if we get one or two hits, that's GG for the uh, Miyoko here. And you know right now they are radioing in to the Miyoko. Guys, you got to get moving. We got another swarm heading your direction. I'm just, if they don't get moving, we've got two torpedoes at least that are hitting. This one may be a little bit wide, but uh, I think it's actually pretty much spot on. But we'll see. But we're at 230 feet on the growler and the grouper. So we've got nothing to worry about, about in that sense. We shouldn't be detected. We're, we're both silent, right? Let's go ultra silent. Ultra silent. Angry torpedoes closing in. Will they hit? They look pretty good. I don't know, though, man. They kind of look like they're going to miss. You know, just looking a little bit suspect. I figure we've got at least one hit here. My luck, it'll be a dud, and Miyoko will survive. Yeah, I think we're only going to get the one hit. Dear God, let it explode. We've had some duds in the past. Please don't let this be one of them. And it looks like it's going straight for these two turrets, which means we could get an ammo detonation here. And if we do, that is lights out for the Miyoko. It's going to be too heavily damaged. But uh, it looks like it's coming straight at it. Yeah, these are all going to miss. Uh, there's... I don't think we're going to hit anybody else with them. But uh, we're definitely going to get one hit. Uh, maybe. I say definitely. It might actually miss. It's going to be real close. If it hits, it'll hit the propulsion. No, we missed. We missed. So close. We'd have done a four degree spread. That would have hit. That is nuts. All right. Well, on that note. I think we're going to pull out. Miyoko is heavily damaged, but uh, still alive. All right. Uh, Sneaky Boys 2, I'm going to need you guys to lay in a course back to New Hebrides. And we will try to intercept them with Sneaky Boy 1 here. So uh, we should be able to do, do the finishing kill. And then we'll call it an episode. I think this has been a pretty good episode to start with. Uh, ignore the plane. Speed up. Ignore the plane. Speed up. Okay, we have an encounter. And I can't skip it. Oh! We've got an encounter with our main fleet. Okay. Well, we don't know what it is, so we're going to assume submarine. We are going to order everybody to turn out. Hold that thought. Make sure we've got everybody selected here. And speed up. If we can get turned as a uh, battle group, we can hopefully avoid. I don't know where a submarine would be. Like, we've got pretty calm waves from the looks of thing. We're going to turn on sonar and radar for all of them. Because I honestly have no idea what we're up against. Okay. Let's go back to Atlanta. 
and we will straighten our course. That's a pretty significant course change. So if anybody launched torpedoes at us, oh my god. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Everybody behind Atlanta. Stop. Break formation. Stop. Atlanta. You're going to be fine. Turn back in. Alabama. We dodged it. Look at those torpedoes, baby. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. That's death staring you in the face right there. All right. Uh, Atlanta. We need you to turn out to the left. And we need uh, Radford and Fletcher to break formation. And we need you guys to go out. Let's set a waypoint out here as well. I don't know that we'll find this guy, but we're going to try. Wait, Fletcher got struck by a torpedo? Come on, man! I literally had everybody dodging. How did you take a torpedo? Dang it, Fletcher. You just had to do it, didn't you? Alright, well, let's go ahead and break you into your own. Because you're going to have to do some damage, Con. I hope... Oh my god. It just wrecked the entire re uh, rear of this ship. I don't think we're going to... I think Fletcher's going down, baby. I don't think we're going to be able to stop it. We'll see. We'll let him sit there on his own. Maybe maybe he'll be okay. God dang it. There's my first sunk ship, probably. Atlanta, what are you doing? Oh, I hate this. hate the way they do this. Okay. Atlanta has doubled all the way back around. But it's alright, because we still have Radford out here. Radford, I need you to slow down. 10 knots. I need you to start listening. We've got to find this guy. We know he's out here. I don't know if I can cheat and look under the water. See him or not. I don't see him, but we are active on sonar. Uh, also, Juno appears to be getting ready to ram us, so let's stop that from happening. And let's go ahead and slow down to about nine knots. We just, we need to get a sonar lock on this guy. Once we find him, he's easy to take out. But if we don't find him, we're going to be in some serious trouble. This episode has it all. But I just, I don't know that we're going to find him. Juno, what are you doing? Seriously. Keep thinking I'm seeing more torpedoes. Go up to 11. 
Now, if the sub is underwater, which it, it obviously is, uh, then we should be able to catch it relatively easily. We know he's in this direction. We're just looking for a periscope, see if he's maybe still at periscope depth. We've got relatively calm seas, so it should be relatively easy to spot him. And the fact that Fletcher hasn't sunk yet is, is a good sign. where everything looks like a freaking periscope sticking out of the water when you're looking for a periscope. If he's smart, he's not even at periscope depth anymore. He's probably GTFO like I did. Generally speaking, you don't stick around after you anger everybody. And I, I think that's exactly what this guy did. Um, it's unfortunate. Where's Fletcher? Fletcher, damage control. Like, he's doing okay. Can't believe I let him hit one of my ships. Radford's turned all the way back around and going the wrong freaking direction. All right, let's just go ahead and uh, disengage. We can speed up time because he's obviously not getting detected. Confirm. All right, so we have moderate damage and moderate flooding on Fletcher. We need to get him back to port, which is real unfortunate. But we can't afford to have that happen either because we've got a transport coming out this way. So unfortunately, Fletcher's going to have to suck it up. And now we've got... Another engagement up here, Sneaky Boys 1, is uh, going to be able to engage, which is good. Uh-oh. Something's wrong. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and call that an episode since we're cra it appears that we're frozen or crashed. So if you like what I'm doing, I hope you guys have. If you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.